So today we are joined by Lori rousseau Nepton. She's a resident astronomer at the Canada-France-Hawaii Observatory and a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Hawaii. So uh, she was the first Indigenous woman in Quebec to obtain a PhD in astrophysics. She received her diploma from the University or Université Laval uh, by studying regions of stellar formation in spiral galaxies using an imaging spectrograph. She's presently an FRQNT postdoctoral scholarship recipient and previously received the Hubert Reeves Fellowship. So Laurie, it's so awesome to have you tuning in and joining us live today. We're excited to get to know you a little bit better and then we'll, we'll turn the classrooms loose and let them ask some questions. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm just so glad to, to be here the, this morning for me. I don't know what time it is for you, but here in Hawaii, it's about 9 a.m. Uh, I have prepared a nice presentation for you, so I hope uh, you'll be able to enjoy it. Uh, and I'm going to share start my, my share screen right now. So I won't be able to see you, but hopefully you see well my presentation here. So um, I'm an astro astronomer. Uh, I work for a telescope, the Canada France Hawaii telescope here in Hawaii. Um, here you see me beside the telescope and also beside one of uh, the nicest sunset uh, that I've seen. And um, so, so the telescope that I work for here as seven astronomer uh, that work for it, um, we have people from Canada, we have people from Hawaii, the US, and also people from France. And we all work together on different uh, topics in astronomy. And um, before I go into the details, so I just want to show you where I am. So it's in the middle of the Pacific. It's quite far from Quebec or uh, any of your location right now. Uh, if I want to go back home to see my family, I have to take a couple of flights. Um, but uh, I do, I try to do it every once in a while. And uh, as Joe mentioned, uh, I am a member of the First Nations. Uh, actually, I'm a member of the Pequot Camille West Nation. It's nearby Saguenay Lake Saint Jean right here. And I go back every year um, with my family and we go hunting a little bit further north. And this is just to give you an idea, a couple of images uh, around our hunting camp. And I think my journey all started there. Um, when I was young, uh, I was spending a lot of time in the nature and I love observing things. I love understanding how they works. And physics is the field of study that allows you to study nature and trying to understand that. And astronomy is a field of physics that just try to do the same thing, but for the universe. So we're looking up and try to understand how things work up there. And um, so at first, my first experience um, in a telescope was in Quebec at the Montmagantic Observatory. So here are some uh, images that I took there. Uh, I spent a lot of time during my studies, my graduate study, um, uh, observing galaxies there. Um, so here's a picture of me with a couple of other students nearby the telescope dome. And um, back then I was uh, testing a new camera. So it was called Espion. Um, it, and it's, uh, it was a very unique camera, a uh, prototype. There was nothing else in the world that was just like Espion. And uh, my job was to make sure that we could observe with it uh, and that we could do science with it. And um, instead of taking just images like a typical camera, like the one you have on your cell phone, um, it does something very special. It's, um, it's splitting the light, just like when you look at a rainbow, the, so the light is split in different colors. So Espion is doing that. It's split, splitting the light in all the colors. And so I can observe a galaxy and see a nice image of a galaxy. And every pixels of an image would be a rainbow, would be all the colors. So it gives you a lot of more, more information if you're an astronomer. So um, we're gonna leave Earth. I have stolen a video from the movie uh, Contact. Uh, probably none of you have seen it, but if ever you want to see a nice movie, try to, to watch Contact. Uh, so we're leaving Earth. We see the Earth and the moon, the sun, and very soon we're gonna see the other planets of the solar system. And I like to show that video at first just to grasp um, how big the universe is. So uh, of course the solar system is, uh, is gigantic. Uh, we have huge planets like Jupiter. We're passing Jupiter and the moons of Jupiter right now. But um, what I think is, oops, just gonna go back here. 
sorry about that. So let's go back to Jupiter. So we're gonna fast forward it a little bit. And this is Saturn. And I want actually to exit the solar system. And here we are. So we're leaving the solar system. We see uh, that bubble of comets. And my work, what I do here uh, is studying new stars. I'm not studying the sun or anything close to the solar system. I'm studying stars that are formed within galaxies in the gas, like this cloud of gas right here. And this gas is always creating new stars and, uh, and it happens all the time in galaxies everywhere. So there's thousands and thousands and thousands of new stars that are created and actually here, um, there's probably uh, thousands of stars within that cloud that are um, being born. Um, and we're gonna, again, fast forward. I don't know how to remove that menu over here. Let me just start it over again to see if, yeah. Give me just a second. Ah, here we go. Okay. And now we're leaving that nebula and we're even leaving the Milky Way. So um, as we move out of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, we see all the stars. There's billions of stars. And then we see another galaxy that is around our own galaxy. It's a, what we call a dwarf galaxy. It's much, much smaller. And then eventually we're going to go through the Andromeda galaxy, one of our closest neighbor. And we see all the gas and the, the stars. And, and as we move out, we see all the galaxies surrounding us. And there's thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And I like to pause the video here just because uh, we know that we have there, that there are so many galaxies around us just for one reason. Because if we were, let's say, an astronaut in space in this exact position, um, our eyes wouldn't be able to see anything. Those galaxies are actually too faint to be seen by the human eye. And so we know that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of galaxies around us just because we observe them with telescopes. And so uh, we would be in, in complete darkness without telescopes. So all these galaxies we have observed now uh, within the past hundreds of years with telescopes and we know how the universe looks like. And um, so, so this is what you see with the naked eye. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to be in an area where there's not too much light pollution. Now, if you use a pair of bin binocular, you might be able to see the Andromeda galaxy if you're looking at it with a pair of binocular. And then if we take a, a telescope, a very powerful telescope, like the Hubble Space Telescope, and we look into one very tiny dark area here, uh, then what you start to see is those galaxies that are farther away. And you notice that they are all very different. They have different colors, they have different shape, different size. And so this is what we're trying to do with the telescopes when we're studying galaxies. We're trying to understand why those galaxies are so different. And, uh, and are there any that, are look, that look just like the Milky Way? Or uh, are, is the Milky Way special or just a normal galaxy and things like that? And so this is my telescope, the Canada France Hawaii Telescope. Um, it, uh, if you're inside the dome, it looks like that. Uh, and I have a nice video that shows how things are moving inside the dome. So here you see the slit of the dome opening before uh, the start of the night. So the sun is still up. Uh, we're actually opening the dome right about the moment where the sun is setting, about like an hour before sunset. And it uh, helps getting a lot of the cool air from outside inside the dome. And the telescope really likes to be surrounded by cool air. And if we wait a little bit, we're going to see very soon. Notice that on the side here, you have those little windows. They're closed right now. But eventually, they will also open to get more air inside. Here you go. And the dome can rotate, and the telescope can point anywhere on sky. So um, I think at the end, our, uh, our observer is tilting the telescope towards us so that we can see the mirror. And the mirror is located right at the bottom here. And it's a very big mirror. It's 3.6 meters. So it's much, much bigger than the human eye. And this mirror is gathering all the light that uh, we need to observe those galaxies. And this is where it's located on the Mauna Kea. And it's the one on the left. And uh, the Mauna Kea has about 13 telescopes uh, at its summit 
it's one of the nicest uh, places on Earth to observe, actually. Um, and this is the island. And this is the big volcano, the Mauna Loa. And aside, there's another one that is really active, the Kilauea. But all the telescopes are on the quiet volcano, the Mauna Kea, right here. And this is something what happens on the island. But don't be worried. It's not uh, very really dangerous for the telescopes. They're far away from, from that. What often happens here is that the weather is not quite nice with us. So this is uh, one of the storms that we got last year. And uh, we still need to, uh, to observe uh, when the, the sky is clear. But when we a, get a storm, we close everything <laughs> to make sure that we, it protects the, our equipment and our cameras. So now this is me in the dome. I'm pushing uh, a, a huge uh, equipment. Uh, it's actually one of our camera. Uh, this camera is called CITEL. And this is the reason why after I did the, my study, my PhD in Quebec, I got hired here because this instrument is actually a second version of that prototype camera that I was using in Quebec, Espion. So Espion was so good. Uh, when I did my PhD, it worked so well that they decided to build a new version, a new generation of Espion uh, for a bigger telescope like the one here on the Mauna Kea. So I got here with that new camera that was built in Canada and we, uh, we mounted it on the telescope. This is uh, how it looked like when, it, when it's on the telescope. And uh, we started observing with it. And uh, the first time you observe with a camera on a telescope, we call that uh, the first light. And this is when it happened in 2015. And there's a group of people that were all there surrounded by the, the computers and the control of the telescope. And we were all waiting for the first light to get into the camera to see the first images of Citel. And at the same time, there was a huge hurricane that was coming towards the island. But we got so lucky because the hurricane turned north right before. Uh, and we could observe and have very, very clear sky for a couple of days in a row. So we were really happy. And uh, so there's a, a group of people that were uh, working at a summit around the telescope. You can see them here. And they were putting uh, Citel on the telescope. So my work here is to do science, of course. Um, but I'm part of this big, uh, um, this big group that is uh, taking care of the telescope. And sometimes we have to do maintenance also. So here's an image of when we clean the mirror. And we actually have to remove uh, the aluminum that is on the mirror, that, reflect, that reflective layer. We have to remove it. And to do that, we use acid. And uh, this is really, really uh, intense. And we are wearing masks and uh, a full suit. And we remove that layer of, uh, of aluminum up from the mirror. And we put a new one, a new shiny one that is reflecting the light perfectly well. And so this is an image of me. I was wearing my suit. You can't recognize me, but believe me, it's me. I'm there. <laughs> and we were cleaning the mirror before, uh, before doing the acid and, and the recoding of the aluminum. And uh, this is also a picture of me with one of the biggest ranch uh, that you will ever see. This is the one that is used to unbolt the telescope, uh, which has screws that each screws actually weigh about 10 pounds. And so back to Citel. Um, so like I was saying, this is the telescope. Citel is at the very bottom. So what happened when we opened the dome is that the light gets into the telescope. It hits the mirror at the bottom, and then it, it's all reflected into a smaller mirror right here, and then reflected back into the middle of the mirror. If you remember well, there's like a hole in the middle of the mirror here. So the, the light is reflected here, goes into that hole, and get into my camera. And this is how I gather the light from the galaxies. And so what do I study, like I was saying, is those stars that are forming inside those clouds of gas. And we can observe them in the Milky Way, like this magnificent one here, uh, which is called, called the Rosette Nebulae. And also, we can do something even better, is we can try to simulate what's happening into those big nebulae with computers. And this is um, actually images from a computer simulation. And uh, I want to show you a video that is simulating uh, in, uh, well, accelerated, in an accelerated, accelerated fashion what's happening in the nebulae. So imagine there's a really young star in the middle of that gas. 
once that star lights up and is literally created from the gas, the light coming from the star is kind of warming the gas around it and it creates those really nice bubble of shiny gas that we observe. And this is what I am looking for my science. And so why this is important uh, for astronomy, it's because each star is like the sun, is formed through gas, uh, with gas in, in, in their galaxies. And this gas can be transformed by stars. So when a star is formed in gas, it, it is transforming that gas. Uh, so our sun right now is burning hydrogen. So hydrogen is a really light gas and it is actually creating new atoms like helium, like oxygen, nitrogen, and things that are surrounding us on earth. Uh, and so those stars are actually um, machine that, that form new, new atoms. And once they die, some of them explode and they push all those new atoms around them in the galaxies. And the cycle goes around and around. So the gas that is now enriched with oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen and other things is creating again new stars uh, that could have planets like the Earth and so on. So we're trying to understand how this cycle is working in galaxy. So now I'm going to show you a, an observation from CITEL. So as I was saying, it's an image. Uh, but it's also a rainbow. So I can go through the rainbow uh, and create a video with my observation. So this is a video that moves into the rainbow. So we're from the red to the blue. And we see that there's things that are flashing actually in galaxy. And we can zoom in and look at those area that are flashy. And actually all of those little points that are really bright are region where you have newborn stars that are warming the gas. And what we see is the really hot gas around newborn stars. And this is an image that I created from, from those observations. So it's a galaxy very close from us. And all the big bright nebulae that we see are actually uh, in an area where you have newborn stars. So uh, we can zoom in, we can see those blue young stars surrounded by the warm gas. And we can even check again the video of that section of the galaxy, which is called Messier 30, 33. And again, you'll see the, the filaments of gas that are really warm uh, appearing in the video here and there. Let me go back where you have actually, yeah, here. So you see all those nebulae are actually region where you have newborn stars. And so um, I'm just a part of the, 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 the study of the universe. I'm just studying one tiny little piece uh, of the puzzle. So, so we're trying to understand how the stars are formed, how, how they influence the galaxies, and how they influence the new generations of stars that will be formed later on. But in astronomy, astronomers study a whole wide uh, um, variety of topics from studying those galaxies when, when they are really, really far away from us, and also trying to understand how the universe evolved from the Big Bang to today. And so I hope that it, I give you an overview of, uh, of what I'm doing, uh, but I hope also you have many, many questions and I'll be uh, happy to answer them. And if ever you end up uh, doing astronomy or, phys or, or physics, uh, be aware that we're having interns and, and students that come here to work with us. So this is just a few images of some students that came to work with me here at the telescope. So keep that in mind. Thank you. <laughs>